Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mother Baby Ness. As you can tell, this episode is a little bit different for many reasons. Um, it's Christy's birthday, hence the tiara. Yes, so Christy is now 45. <laughs> <laughs> I am not 45. No, Christy turned 35. <laughs> I was going to make up another age. <laughs> Christy's now 35. I'm really um, sad about the fact that I'm 35. <laughs> I'm like really sad, like worse than when I turned 30 because wow. like... Because now I'm officially closer to 40 than I am 30. That is true, but like, age is but a number. <laughs> I feel 75. I was going to say, <laughs> you're only as old as you feel, so you're really 80, so it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, um, we haven't had caterpillar cake yet. I brought caterpillar, ca- <gasps> caterpillar cake for breakfast, and I have a lack of caterpillar cake in front oh, of me. Oh, we haven't even had breakfast. Oh. And it's like the rules, and now you've got to have cake on your, uh, for breakfast on your birthday. I mean, we have cake for breakfast most most days <laughs> <laughs> but caterpillar cake yeah yeah okay i feel like i'll catch it up as soon as we finish the podcast because i'm this not is gonna be now. the fastest podcast you've ever seen <laughs> um and those who are listening and not watching will not be able to see that i have my arm in a sling because i have at least four ribs out of place right now mm. um and it's the joys of having well it's just loss syndrome uh, that and the fact that september is always baby yeah. season what pushed me over the edge was picking up um, a cabbage, I think it was, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous, but like it had been niggling and niggling and niggling, and then I was trying to make dinner, picked it up, and I was like, oh, that was disgusting. And I haven't gone back in since, and I don't know how to put them back in. She's asked me three times already, do I want to feel her rib out of place? No, I do not want to feel the fact that your rib is just floating about your chest right now. Four of them, not just one. Lovely. These ones have never come out before. These ones up here, mm. like the top one have, but not these ones here. I don't, I don't think they have. But yeah, it's I've had no sleep, hence my my face looks like this. Um, and yeah, I just mm. go with it. I mean, you don't look half bad. I I've seen you looking worse. Oh yeah, I've got, looked a lot worse. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's where we're at. I feel like we need to do an episode on your Alistair loss. Do we? Yeah, like how how that affects like everyday life. Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there with Alistair loss. Well, there's a definitely a lot of people out there with mm. Ellis Danos. Mm. They're called zebras. Yeah. And now, like, we get around the things that you can't do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she got some lovely looks. Especially when we was in, um, well, no, actually, not in Vegas. People don't give you funny looks in Vegas. No. But when she hires a mobility scooter to get around places, like when we take the kids to, like, theme parks and stuff, and they're too big to walk around, and they look at her, and they're like, what's she doing on a Well, yeah, girl? because... Because the thing is, when you see somebody on a mobility scooter who then just gets up and walks to the queue, yeah, like it can be like, oh, do you know when you see somebody with a stick who's not really using the stick but is using the, st- do you know what I mean? And you go, yeah. oh, they clearly don't need that stick. But now being in a situation where, like, I could really use a stick, but my shoulder doesn't allow it. Like it'd make my shoulder so much worse if I used a stick yeah. for my knees. Like, I know what those people feel like. Yeah. And it must be horrendous having to walk around with that stick and people knowing people are going, mm, didn't even need that. Yeah. It's horrible. Hmm. Also, I'm really sad about this mug because it's a right-handed You're mug. You're it in the wrong one. Oh. Now you can't see my ghost. Spooky season is upon us. Well, she did say, tell me this morning that ghosts are for life and not just for Halloween, so maybe just use I next do use. Time. I do use this mug all the time, to be mm, fair. Maybe, maybe just use it the next podcast when your arms... Freak. Next podcast would be Halloween podcast, so... I won't be because I'll use my witch's brew mug. <laughs> I feel like nobody notices our mug game on this podcast. No, I know. More, more interest should be. Well, paid. What am I going to have? I'm going to have to get a new. I'm going to have to get a new pumpkin. Some lovely pumpkin mugs out of these days. Oh, we are going to Cardiff tonight after this for your birthday meal. Yes. So we could call into Home Sense and go Ooh. and have a look at the um. What make is my? Uh, uh, tea mug. Oh, I just realised we've got we've got a. Um, uh, so, so something done, Ray done, Ray done. Yeah, we've got a Ray, Ray done, done candle, and we haven't we got have. it out. A cold run one. Yeah, it's not quite Halloween yet, is it? No, it's not. I will be adding that to the massive pumpkins. Every year, our pumpkin um, collection grows. I feel like yes. we've got a problem. Oh, 100 percent. We've got more pumpkins than anything else, any other prop that we have, and we did our first pumpkin. Um, use our first pumpkin prop of the year last week. In a newborn session. Middle of, s- middle of September. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to fill people in on, is it? What's happened I this month? Think it's so. just been so many babies. Mm. 
September's always busy season for babies, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody's. Conceived over Christmas. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm, everyone gets drunk over Christmas and then spam the September baby, which is good because like they're the oldest in the year and they tend to have like a an extra school year after the time, don't they? Oh, yeah. Mm. Very exciting. Riveting. <laughs> Should we yeah. get on with the podcast? We've, been, we've had a lot of babies <laughs> in. We're very tired and broken people. <laughs> but yet we still you for you guys. We are. Maybe another episode. Let's get on with it. My coffee's too hot to drink. <laughs> Mother, baby, and us. Let's open threads. I have been saving posts for the last couple of weeks. Or days, really. Okay. So, like our last episode, we're just going to read off some things that have been happening. Mostly on threads. Can I just say how much I love threads? And it's very underrated. I'm not even on threads. It's a very niche social media at the moment which I think is why I like it so much because people are tending to be really nice on there there's a few odd bods that people are just like nah this is not a place for you get away yeah um but other than that it just seems like a really nice place for photographers to just be nice to each other people post their photos you have really nice comments back there's no unsolicited creative criti- not creative what's it called constructive criticism <laughs> creative criticism um yeah it's just a nice place to be at the moment and the algorithm's working really well in my favour because it shows me photographer stuff, maternity and newborn photographer stuff, yeah. and Formula One all on the same thread. Oh and I never Lord. usually get all of them like mixed in together. I am not a Formula One fan. I know everything there is to know about Formula One because she tells me every single day. She'll give me a little update of what's going on in the Formula One world. Well, it's important. Popular culture. Oh, yeah. Imagine in a pub quiz. You'll like be thanking me I'd one day. I feel like I'm, I'd be very bad in a pub quiz. I... I Listen to an awful lot of information. I just can't retain it. I have noticed. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, don't have me and your team in a pump quiz. No. Anywho, right. We digressed. Mm. Okay. Both sides weigh in. As a photographer, I find it icky when photographers post a massive list of expenses from camera body and lenses to monthly subscriptions and everything between and outside of that. Do clients care what we spend our gear on? spend on our gear or anything else or do they just want to know what we're going to do for them so they'll have an enjoyable experience and get their desired outcome thoughts okay so i can see both sides of this i wouldn't personally post about how much we spend all the time because i feel like that's some people will take that as oh look how much we spend on the camera, and some people will take it as like get a grip yourself that's just you what you gotta like that's yeah. doing business but at the same time there are people out there they're like you don't do free shoots or you don't you don't only charge 20 pound for a session fee yeah and i understand why people do it because people they get annoyed but yeah because people don't understand how much it costs to run a photography business because mm. like we know it's astronomical amounts of money to run a photography business um especially when you like nice nice things <laughs> <laughs> uh yes so i understand why people do it i understand the frustration i understand why but i personally wouldn't do it I, I don't think we've ever posted how much everything costs because no. there's just no need, is it? No. I mean, we always post our gear for other photographers if they want yeah, to know what... To yeah, with yeah. links. So, like, if they want to find out... the next bit of gear. <laughs> <laughs> so if they want to find out what we're using, then, like, you know, if if I'm watching, oh, a makeup tutorial and they don't tell me what, what they're using, I'd be filming because if I like the end result yeah. and I want to recreate it, I want to know what they're using. So absolutely tell people what you're using but not for that instance that yeah. you're talking about there. And don't keep posting this cost me this, this cost me this. Yeah, don't do that. You don't need to put prices next to it. No. And like our clients are not the kind of client that we would be telling them, you know, or, yeah. you know, because they don't need to know that. They know no. that they're coming in and having a fantastic experience and... Yeah, like sometimes with the gowns. Yes. Like, I don't even think we tell them the price then, though. It's no, this it's is handmade couture, like, designer yeah. Um, yeah. gowns from, like, Germany or whatever when we yeah. get a KH or, like, then... They understand the, the, they understand the value without knowing how much yeah. it costs. So, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't think they need to know. And if I'm completely honest, that's only, like, something as a talking point when we're doing like a pre-session and they're going through our wardrobe and they're the client wardrobe and like oh my god look at these yeah and, and we, we we talk yeah. about like where we get them from and everything and it makes else. the experience so much better because they're like oh my god i'm in a really expensive dress and yes it makes it i better. don't i don't even i think when they're in the gowns they know they feel expensive they they yeah. look expensive you can tell 
Yeah, they, you want them to feel a million dollars, don't you? So, yeah. Um, would you like to hear some of the requirements? Um, as a photographer, I don't think they care. Imagine asking your mechanic how much his tools cost to justify the price. You would never. So why do photographers feel this makes sense? Your value is based off the experience you provide your customers, your experience in business, and the cost of doing business. Not simply, my camera is worth 2K, so this is why I charge this. Yeah, I, and I absolutely agree that. And I saw something about, I think that might have been like a mechanic or something like that. They, um, they asked somebody to do a job that they couldn't do and then they asked somebody to come in who knew what they were doing. They had like 40 plus years experience. It took them five minutes to do the job. And then they wanted to charge them like a thousand pound or something. Well, and yeah, like, he got a thousand pounds worth of experience. Yeah. And he was like, it's not, I'm not charging you for the five minutes it took to do the job. I'm charging you for the 40 years worth of experience that that guy took two days and couldn't complete the job because mm. he didn't know how to do it. So I'm training and everything that went into it. And he spent yeah. all that time. He's worth a thousand pounds just like, to come in and do it. If you look at our photography skills 13 years ago, how many years have we been doing it? 13? 12. 12. 12 years ago. They're not like what they are now. No. And that's what you're paying for. Mm. 12 years of getting it right. Yeah. Mm. Um, absolutely. We don't need to justify our prices. We provide a luxury service. And if people find value in it, awesome. If not, then they aren't our client. We don't have to convince anyone who doesn't have the value or we aren't in the budget of. It's really an ego thing, in my opinion. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So I basically all the comments are the same thing. Like, yeah. There's literally no need. No. And I, I do understand the frustration because it is frustrating. But if I'm honest, I feel like you're, you're talking to somebody who's not going to listen to you anyway. Yeah. You, can, you can tell them how much everything costs until you blow in the They've face. probably asked, can, does anybody know a photographer that doesn't charge an arm and a leg? Mm. It's one of them. Yeah. They're not going to listen to you anyway. So don't bother wasting your breath. Okay. So this next one, um, somebody has quoted another thread. Okay. The original thread says, photographers, why don't you deliver raw fl- f- real words? Why don't you deliver raw images to clients? What is the reasons behind it? Okay. And this person has said, I absolutely will deliver raw fly- files to clients if they pay for them. My client work isn't my personal art. It's there to serve my clients. If they want to process a photo to look a certain way for their brand style guidelines, that's their business. The one thing I won't deliver at any price is my copyright. Now, I have thoughts on this. Go on then. Our photography is different because that's a brand photographer I believe yeah so when you're saying they have their own brand style obviously if you go and work for I don't know off the top of my head all saints and you do a brand uh, you do a photography session for them yeah like as a subleased person yeah subcontracted real words um, I am professional I swear um <laughs> It's got to look like all it's got to look like all things. It's got to look like the, the Dark, rest of the stuff on their website. Yeah. If it's like product photography or whatever yeah. else, it's got to look. Dark, so I get that. If you want, yeah. if you've got a specific way you edit things for your brand, and that photographer hasn't captured it, then yeah, buy the rose and get somebody that has processed your photos before to do that for you. Yeah. Our images are they come to us for our image, like our style and everything else. If you buy a newborn f- photo off us. You're not going to then take it to somebody else to edit. No. Because that's not what you're paying us to do. You're not no. paying us to just to capture images in bulk. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why we don't give out roles, because that, that is our artwork. You are paying yes. for us to create artwork for you, not a file. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And there is there is place for roles, depending on the circumstance like that. Once I've ever given roles to a client, because it. they'd done my head in, and they nagged and nagged and nagged, and nothing was good enough for them, and like there was a whole situation yeah. so I handed over the rows and said if I hand you over these rows you're having raw files no edits and then that's like yeah. we cut ties and then I had a message back a week later I can't even open these files what's wrong with them and I said you asked for the raw They're files raw. Yeah. you need a photo like photoshop or some sort of software to open it and you need to know how to edit them yeah because they're a specific file format etc etc oh well I didn't know that I didn't understand can we go back and edit can you no, this is that wasn't what we agreed. Yeah. Like, and that's I've never done it again because I was, no, I was like, that, well, you've just proved my point. Yeah. You've seen somebody go, oh, ask for the rows. Yeah. Because that's the people have been told to do for some strange reason. I don't know why people do this. And funny enough, that was back when we didn't charge an awful lot of anything for our photography. Yeah. Mm. Oh, do I? Yeah. The comments on this. Yeah. Uh, depends what kind of shoot it is. If it's a content capture, my roles are generally trash because of the amount of cropping, etc. I do after. 
I always hesitate to deliver rows because it would likely give them a negative view of my work. I might take a thousand photos and, and deliver 100 good images. They don't need the other 900. They're objectively not good. Yeah, but that's not the raw file. That's just giving them everything. Yeah. There's a difference in it. Then that guy's come to back. Oh, yeah, not to be clear, I don't deliver all my files, just the raw files of the keepers. Yeah. Um, I will sell copyright. It will be per image cost and transaction. It won't necessarily be affordable, though. Yeah. The contracts can stipulate the client li license to the use back to me for portfolio, etc. Most portraits I shoot don't and most likely won't make me residuals, so I'd rather to be... Um, I'd rather... To a complete but do a complete buyout at a higher profit initial margin. Finally, some women with sense. If the client thinks they can do better, go for it. Believe it or not, sometimes they and their high powered retouching department really can. I'll sell you my shirt for the right price. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a whole other situation. Um, and, right, and so everybody's business is different, isn't it? Yeah, like, I think these are branded photographers. Yeah, what, what works for some doesn't work for others. Like, so let's go on the original post, and okay. then these replies are. When you go to a restaurant, do you want a cooked meal or do you want raw ingredients? Absolutely. Oh my God, I love that. That, that sums it up perfectly. Because I don't want someone to use an unedited photo and give my, me credit for the way it looks. My art is not complete until the end in, editing is done. Agreed. They have no reason to have them. Most want the raw file so they can use social media filters to edit and the photo turns out trash. <laughs> 100%. This is what I mean. Yeah. So I get it. Like, I didn't really think of it from the point of view of a branding photographer before. Yeah. And I get why they would do it. Yeah. But for, like, a newborn maternity photographer... No, as a general no rule need. as a photographer, no. Because your end result is your finished product, and that's what they should be... Yeah. That's what you should deliver. But no, I understand it from, like, that kind of point of view, if it's for branding. But then, do they the bigger firms not have... Like in house photographers. Yeah, but then you'll get the odd time where it's like, oh, in house photographers off, I need this done by the end of the week. They're on holidays. Oh, okay. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Mm. Like, I've been subcontracted before by a big company to do website images for them because their photographer, they had, their photographer had left. Yeah. And they didn't have a new one in yet. I didn't want a full time job with them. I didn't, like, they were like, do you want to apply? And I was like, no, I'm okay. But you did that. But I end. did for yeah. like a couple of weeks. I went in and just done product fo f photos from oh, for like okay. a day or two each week, just to like it was just a bit of income at the time, like because I was selling union stuff and yeah, I didn't want a full time job with them taking photos of lamps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just didn't like. I didn't want to <laughs> take lamps, photo lamps. Next one. Yesterday I got this DM. I was before they wanted coverage for an event. I was shooting a Reds game. I don't know what that is. Obviously it's America. Maybe baseball. Who knows? Doesn't need it. Like okay. it's not. Doesn't need it for the context of the thing. Okay. Um, and was soaked in sweat. I knew I had an hour to drive each way with traffic to go home, shower, change. But I of course said yes, but wanted to share this for two reasons. So the message says, "Hey, are you free today at six thirty till eight thirty to shoot an event for?" And then the name is redacted. Okay. So when I first read this, I was like, "Absolutely not. There's no, no. way. I'm going to open L that I'm oh. going to go from an event." shower, change, and then go to another event at the drop yeah. of a hat. But there was extra threads at the end, so she explained why she okay. did it. Um, so number one, always be prepared. Yes, I had to go home and shower and change, but I also have always have gear with me and I'm ready to go. Batteries charged, SD cards formatted, etc. I had dinner plans with friends last night that I had to cancel because I knew this was more important. He was a fellow photographer, so he still he, he got it, but still. You have to prioritise being available for work when you're a freelance. But the biggest reason I bring all this up is, number two, this opportunity came from me showing up over and over again, even when I didn't want to. The guy that reached out is an NFL agent that I made a connection with in the summer while shooting another client of mine. And the event last night was for, the, for a Bengals player, football player, who is the new co-owner of a business in some location. I know a lot of people may say these incredible opportunities I have, these are... Uh, these are incredible opportunities that I have, but it's a result of straight up grinding and showing up day after day. It's not just going to fall into your lap. The world of photography, especially sports photography, is tough and you have to set yourself apart. So. So these are big time athletes yeah. and it's big opportunities. It was a big opportunity. Okay. I understand so, that. Yeah. And it sounds like she's still building. Yeah. Which you have to, like, you just got to grind at that point. Like, I yeah. didn't say no to a job for the first, like, five, six years. 
I saw then, the evidence. <laughs> I was tired. Yeah. But like people knew who I was then. Yeah. So I get where she's coming from. Yeah. And I she's s- making a name in her field. She is, yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like she's doing the right thing. Like the people that she's networking with and, and doing the jobs for are the right people, yeah. obviously. Which is awful, isn't it? Because if like Joe Public messaged and said, I need you to do this shoot for me. I know it's last minute, but like... Yeah, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. No. But it is going to get her name up there. Yeah. Like she, it'll be word of mouth of, I, so-and-so did this player's images, get her. She was really good, do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's, it's hard to say no to those opportunities, even when you're tired and like want to go home and just go to bed. Yeah. But if Joe Public said that to me, I'd be like, nah, I'm okay. We wouldn't do it for a client for a couple of reasons. Um, one being Abigail's Ellis Danlos, hence the sling. Yeah. Um, we can only do so much. And sometimes it's just not feasible to, to do extra hours in a day because like, you just can't take it. But um, another thing is we pride ourselves on the experience of it all. Yeah. Of that first initial conversation on the phone, coming in, getting to know each other over a cuppa, going through the wardrobe. Like, our clients love doing all of that. Yeah. And then the excitement on the build-up of, of you know... They love the, they love their images. And they, they and absolutely gush over their images. Yeah, but they do, yeah. they love the experience more. Yeah, they do. And if it's a last minute, oh, like, don't get me wrong. There's been many, many, many a time where we've had a client, oh my God, I know I should have booked already, but the baby's already here. Is there any chance you can fit me in? And if we can, we will. Because, yeah. like, I wouldn't want anybody to not have photos of their baby. Yeah. And, and you know, you're not going to turn down work if you, got, if you can fit them in. But at the same time, they're never going to have that same experience yeah. as, you know. But And if that was a, oh, like if we'd finish our working day and oh can you do this for me this evening no, no. I'm going home to my kids yeah like we did we did a bit of that before we had kids it's got to be a very special circumstance yeah. for that to happen yeah and again everybody's circumstances are different mm. if you haven't got kids and if you're not you know yeah it was before we had kids that yeah. like kids, child that I would just drop everything and just go and photograph something. Do you feel like we have kids? Because, like, yeah, I, I, we, I, I would boys are ours, and they, yeah. do you know what I mean? <laughs> I always say kids. I only really go on. Oh, kids, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking this the other day. <laughs> we never had one. We both had one child at, at the same, same time. time. <laughs> and ended up with two kids. <laughs> ended up with twins. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So. I get it, where she's coming from. Yeah. It's great that she's always ready and prepared to do stuff like that. Yeah, and I feel like it's a good situation for her to be in. Yeah, but for I her. feel like burnout oh, yeah. may be around the corner. Question for photographers. When I first started out, I was offering free photo shoots for my family and friends. We've all been there. Yeah. Um, now that I'm starting to charge, the friends that I used to take for free are asking me to carry on shooting for free for them. How do I tell them nicely that I'm no longer doing shoots for free? This is hard because everybody's been there and we have a very extensive family that we, we did do. free shoots for. And then when the younger ones started having their babies, like obviously we did it for one and you kind of feel like you've got to do it for another. But like when circumstance arises that you have to start charging, you just got to be honest with them. I've now, look, yeah. I'm really sorry. Like I used to do that and I just can't, I can't, I'm not in a position we to do that anymore. No, and because the thing is, We've got paying clients yeah. that take up so much time yeah. that unless you're paying for that time, like you can't just you're taking up our free time basically. You're taking yeah. away time from our kids. You're taking away because I'm having to like we're having, having to come in and edit yeah. on our time off and you know free time and it's it's not really fair. No, there's also circumstances where we're happy to shoot yeah. for free, but Absolutely. like we can't just. Because we've known you since school, or because it's those kinds of people that yeah. we would have oh. probably done it for free yeah. years ago. Yeah. Because it's oh, gone. We'll do this one for free, and then yeah. like later down the line or whatever. But and it depends on on. I, I, I suppose every situation is different. It depends on how close you are to that person, and like yeah. like we'll always look after our family because yeah. it's our family. Um, it just sucks a bit that we got such a big family. 
<laughs> but we love them all very much. And we like, could literally just work for free if, like, oh my they God. would keep us in, but like, oh. in free business. But yeah. like, and when your best friend has a baby, yeah. and he's the most photographed child you've ever <laughs> had already, and he's not even a month old. Yeah. So, but it's hard, and it, you do feel really awkward having to have that conversation. But mm. sometimes it's just got to be done. And if you were going to be out of pocket and you can't do that, then you just got to be honest, haven't you? Yeah. So, um, they came back with, personally, I don't agree with your choice to say no to your family. What's the harm in spending a few minutes helping your family out? They supported you in the beginning. I had a friend who needed a headshot. We went out to my backyard and took four photos and emailed them. It took 10 minutes. Now, I don't believe that's what she's talking about. No. Because our photo shoots do not take 10 minutes. No. And we wouldn't go out to the backyard and take four <laughs> photos. If we're yeah. going to do a photo shoot... We're going to do it. a photo And shoot. usually, with friends and family... They're because more elaborate. They are, because we've got time to experiment and say... Because it's us doing it, and we know yeah. that it's not a client, a paying client, who like we can't be unprofessional in front of. Yeah. We spend more time like trying to work things out and doing things. So they take longer, if anything. Yeah. And I feel like, in a way, we're quite lucky to have so many cousins that are having babies, because... We're always looking for um, models for our YouTube tutorials and we always need to film content. And for those kinds of ones, we wouldn't do that with a paying customer because they're yeah. paying us for something specific. So, like, you know, we quite often need somebody for something. Um, like, we're filming a video tomorrow and yeah. we literally rang our cousin up and we're like, can we borrow your baby for an hour on Tuesday? She's like, yeah, of course we can. Well, we yeah. do it. Like... So we are lucky to have them. And I agree with her that they were there for you in the beginning. Yeah. But at the same time, if it's going to hinder, like if he's coming in between paid work, yeah. it's a and fine it's that, balance. It's that thing of, um, you wouldn't expect, um, you, you, you would pay like a designer hundreds of pounds for a handbag, but you wouldn't pay for a session fee off somebody you've known since school yeah. because it doesn't you haven't got the same perceived value because that's a designer and that's somebody but like somebody posted that about like yeah, i can't remember the actual now word now with the fenty booty stuff like yeah. you you'd pay like 35 pound for a blusher off rihanna you who you've never met yeah you wouldn't you know invest in your friends in your friend small business small business that you've known forever yeah. yeah and i absolutely agree and you would expect people do expect a lot from somebody they've known for a long discount. time friends and family discount yeah but it's like i think it's starting to change the more like after lockdown a lot of people open their own businesses didn't they? Yeah. and i think people's perce- perception of small businesses and having friends and family discount and stuff like that changed to um when like how do i explain it like you want to support that person in their business yeah so like instead of paying your friend what they charge in you pay your friend and then some, because you're saying, this is me putting forward that I'm supporting yeah. you and I want you to do well and I, I believe in you. And I wouldn't expect anybody to pay over and above what customer no. pays, but it's that mentality in it that they more, a lot of people expect it for free, but the real people who support, because they're supporting you and they'll yeah. post it on socials and I'll get, I'll get you like around a bit more. That's not supportive. That's... Like, People have given us tips and they've given us um, gifts. Yeah. Like we've had loads of beautiful, lovely, gorgeous gifts. And and uh, but the people that don't have the money, like we are a luxury product. So mm. not all of the people that we were in school with, have grown up with, or like have been friends with over the years, can afford to pay for our services. And that's absolutely fine. Yeah. But it takes no money whatsoever to like, comment, share a post on Instagram or Facebook, yeah. watch a YouTube video and give us a little thumbs up. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that kind of thing. It'll take a little bit of your time, but it doesn't cost you anything. And if you are... But it's those people that don't do that, but the people that, that expect. Ask, expect discount. Yeah. Whereas the people who are sharing and liking everything and genuinely support you and everything will be the ones like, no, I will pay. Yeah. No, I will pay you and I will give you a tip. Yeah. yeah or yeah. like, yeah. So, yeah. I think at some point, if they're expecting it for free, we go, absolutely not. That's not no. support. No, no. And how did they support you in the beginning if you give them a free shoot anyway? Yeah. They support you by like giving their time, but you give them free photos, so yeah. that was a... A win-win. Yeah. Mm. This actually follows on nicely oh, okay. to the second one. that oh, Not second one, we've done loads. Photographers, how do you feel about working for free? So it's basically the same thing, but this is different, isn't it? Yes. Now, again, we have done this. 
and the circumstance. It depends on the circumstance. Yeah. Now, w- the the most recent one was a um, a friend of ours who wasn't a friend until we met him. Um, he opened a restaurant around the corner from. I didn't have a clue you were on about then. <laughs> opened a restaurant around the corner. Yeah, a little a, a gorgeous cafe around the corner from us. Now we went in there as a local business. We wanted to show some support um, in the community, so we went there for some food. We met him. We're like we became firm friends. Mm. His food was amazing. We loved what he was doing. Not as well as all with food. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and he needed a little bit of support in getting images for his social media and stuff. And we always need support in the food department. So we did work for free. He fed us so that we a lot could of food. A, a lot, a lot of food, so that we could take some beautiful photos of his of his food, so we can get it all on Instagram yeah. and promote himself. We were helping his business. He was feeding us. Yeah. And to be fair, anybody that walked in that cafe with a pram, he would put a business card in the pram with a baby. <laughs> that was a bit and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, please don't put things with sharp edges in a pram with a newborn baby. But thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. So like, that that is a an instance where we would work for free. Not, I mean, if you've got food and you want to try and tempt us, don't because we'll say yes. <laughs> but um, it's not something we do all the time. No. But we were showing support for somebody yeah. in the local community who we ended up being very good friends with. And yeah. that, I feel, is absolutely fine. Same with when we are asking people for model calls. We don't charge for our model calls because we need something specific out of those. Yeah. So when and we, we provide them with um, like social media files. files of the images, so they're getting something out of it. Yes. So they get to post their beautiful baby or their maternity images on social media. That gives us a nice little boost because their friends are seeing our images. And also, they get in the shoot for free. They don't have to pay anything for it because we need the content to film our tutorial for yeah. you too. So they have a massive discount. Win-win. They get an awful lot mm. for being a model for us. Um, Another situation that we got ourselves into. We didn't get ourselves into. But anyway, um, somebody approached us wanting to do a maternity session. I'm trying not to flash you in the eye because I like to keep oh. catching my <laughs> camera. Um, wanted to do a maternity session. Yes. Um, and she was really quirky looking, really cool. Yeah. We were like, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. She had some very some, something very specific in mind. We were like, yeah, we don't mind shooting it. Yeah. Um, and it was fine. We were happy to work for free because it was somebody that we wouldn't have had in our portfolio otherwise. Yeah. And it was something that we thought we would work really well and we were yeah. excited to do. And then she said, all oh, right, but these are my rates. So she approached us and then wanted us to pay for her to come into the, to yeah. the studio. Yeah. She was using our studio. We were shooting. She wanted the photos for free. And it was her idea. It was what she wanted to shoot. Yeah. And this is where we don't work for free. No, absolutely not. Now, I understand that if we had contacted her and said, we want to shoot you, we're like, yeah. we absolutely love your style, we want to do this, da 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 and she go, yeah, okay, these are my rates. That... Yeah. Fine, but and we've worked with that before. Like, we yeah. if there's something specific we want to shoot, yeah, like we we will pay our creatives. Like, yeah. we will pay in any situation, even if it's like something that we've come up with, com- like as a team. Yeah, and there's a budget there that we can. Yeah, like all yeah. kind of be paid. We will do it. Yeah, we believe in paying creatives fairly. Yeah. but if you come to us with an idea and you want us to work for nothing. You don't then charge us, like, Mm-mm. because all you're doing is turning up, not all you're doing, you're turning up a modeling, but, like, we are doing all of the f- um, photography, we're doing all of the editing. You were using our studio with our electric. Electric, our, like, the heating. Equipment. Like, yeah. That was, yeah, that's not happening. No. Yeah, so it just, I think, it's just common sense and... And communication, because yeah. we said to her, that, that's not happening. Yeah. And then she came back with, oh, can you pay for my travel instead then? Yeah. No. No. Because, and like... Because if we did that for one, then like, that opens the floodgates for people going, oh, they'll pay us to... Like, yeah. No, we, we, uh, we're we running a business. We're not paying you to, to photograph you. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. So I think it the circumstance needs to be right. If you were both mutually getting what you need out of it without having to be paid, great. If it's gonna yeah. if it's gonna benefit you both, great. Yeah. If you're lifting somebody up and you're able to do that, why not? If you're not in a position to do it, then don't do it. No. Hmm. 
Okay, so I found a post um, on Facebook. Let me find it. Now, this... She's been in the groups again. I have been in the groups again. This had to happen in America because it's where all the fun stuff happens, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so the post was, photographer escorted out of an elementary campus after inappropriate comments to students. Now... Inappropriate comments can be taken in... Yeah, they've got the headline right. They, oh, definitely, clickbait. definitely <laughs> clickbaity. Now, the inappropriate comments were... Um, <laughs> a photographer... They were obviously photographing these children in a, in a school. And this a woman said something about... Um, can I steal your identity? And can I eat your soul? Now, I can't even imagine what this child's face looked like. In response right. to that comment, but she then said, um, well, what do you expect me to eat if I can't eat your soul? And the kid turned around and said, I don't know, noodles. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I just think these kids are innocent and, and you shouldn't be saying things like that to them. Right, no, right. Obviously, you shouldn't say things like that to children. But I've met children, they're feral. They are, yeah. And when I was in school, I got called a goth a lot. And I feel like, this is the kind of response from one of those situations. So a kid has turned around to her and called her some. I don't know because I've something. never, I've never seen this woman in my life. Like I don't know what she looks like, but that was my initial thought when I read, "You're gonna, I, I want to eat your soul," or whatever she said, was that would be my response if somebody said, "Oh look at that goth over there," like they did quite often. Like meeting children. That's one of my first response, my yeah. knee-jerk response. And she shouldn't have said it. No. Because they are children and she's and the adult in the situation. Yes. And if you're a child and they call you a goth and you turn around and say that to another child, then that's understandable. But as an adult, even if you are a goth, and even if these children are great on you, because children do great on you, our own children great on us more than most. But, like, I wouldn't turn around and tell my child, watch out because I might eat your soul. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's just, that's... That kids would have nightmares about that. Oh, they go because if they, they my child would. Have I met him? Yeah, but your child wouldn't call out an adult walking through the school. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? The kind of child that calls out an adult and says something to him, unless she's completely just out of the blue, just walked past the child and gone. I can reach your soul. soul. Like nobody does that. Like some people do. Some people are weird. But anyway, yeah, but how would they get hired in a school? Like, do you know what I mean? Well, I don't really know, but um, it's it's like remember that time I was walking, I was walking to get a lift to school, whilst reading a book, which I shouldn't have done. I was walking down a hill, but I was reading a book on the way to like to my lift, and a kid turned around and went, "Oh, look at that lesbian over there reading a book!" Like kids just do stupid, say stupid things, and it's probably just a knee jerk reaction. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I love how many lesbians read books. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, know. I just looked at him. I was like. There's so many things wrong with that situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they said um, the photography company is now investigating the incident. Uh, we want to commend our students for quickly reporting the incident. We are thankful. Oh, somebody had written a post about it on Facebook, so they're thankful to the person that read, that put that message out there, so that they knew about the situation. Um, oh, they got the police involved. Parents were writing in. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> the parents that put the initial post up didn't want to be named. Um, they wanted to stay out of it. I mean, I feel like if you're going to put a post up on Facebook, you're not staying out of any situation, are you? No, and um, I feel like it's probably because their kid is feral and they probably. know it's going to come back at them. Um, but she told the people writing this article that she didn't blame the school. Well, no, because there was <laughs> the <laughs> the school didn't do anything. But, um, the basically the bottom of the story was they didn't find out who the photographer was. Like, I don't I don't know whether she was, like, subcontracted or... Sounds I like if they said the photography company is probably, like, the school photographers that hire just... You don't have to... The job... Ty- uh, real words. The job description is no photography experience needed. Yeah. No equipment them. needed. Yeah. And you just turn up. They hand you a camera and the settings are on auto and you just shoot, like... Yeah. I feel like that school learned their last and they're not going to be doing that again. <laughs> and they will have... Uh, whatever the equivalent of a DBS check is in America and and make sure that these children, these adults should be around children. Yeah. Mm. Um, hats off them for the clickbaity title though because as soon as I read that, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Still inappropriate though. It is. Inappropriate. It, 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 uh, yeah. The, she was the adult in the situation. She should have yeah. known better. But also, like, 
I quite bet. often I've wanted to say something very inappropriate to a child, but I've just kept it to myself and said it in my <laughs> head. Oh, sometimes waiting for him to leave and then said it to you. <laughs> you know, you just don't do it in front of the child, do you? No. Thank you for watching another episode of Mother Baby Ness. We hope you enjoyed. We've got some bonus content for you guys over on our YouTube channel for members only. So if you haven't signed up to our membership, don't forget to check that out. And at the moment, you're getting all of the bonus features for 99 pence until Bargain. January 2025. Bargain. Everything that we do on members only will be for 99 pence. Every time you say members only, it sounds like... Only fans. Yeah. Yes, yeah, nothing not like that. that. It's not that. Nothing like <laughs> that. It is new bonus maternity content. Only. <laughs> Some Q&As, but it's members, uh, it's um, maternity and newborn related. Yeah. <laughs> so go we'll check that out, guys. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Mother, baby, and us.